Hey folks, I want to take a real quick second to show you all of the changes that we've made to our cabinet families for Revit. The biggest change that you'll notice right off when you start to use these cabinets is they are all much faster. I redid how they were all being assembled and the result is a much faster cabinet. So this cabinet in the previous version was the biggest offender on how long it took to regenerate after a change. It used to take on my machine two and a half minutes. So we're just gonna, as a live demo, we're going to go into the parameters and we'll just change that oven offset to two and a half feet. And let's add another shelf or a drawer. This used to take two and a half minutes. Now it should take about seven seconds and it completely regenerates. So like I said, this was the worst case scenario. The, the other cabinets also are much faster than they used to be. One of the things that we did as well was we've added now to all of the upper and tall cabinets, this parameter called crown height. You can now change the height of the crown which is just kind of a small bonus. Then you'll notice uh, you get a lot more families. We've made a couple new families, and then we've also overhauled old ones. So we used to have this cooktop family, um, but it didn't have the cooktop in it. So now we've nested the cooktops inside the family, and it comes in a variety of sizes and makes it much faster to place cooktops. You don't have to do the appliance separate. And they also, the if you use the cut geometry command between the countertop and the base cabinet, it will cut a hole for the cooktop into your cabinet. Along those same lines, we've now included the appliances inside the tall cabinets for the ovens and microwaves, and we've come up with a bunch of options. And we've added a doors underneath as well. Before your only option were drawers, now you can do doors underneath as well. Again, we put the sinks, we nested the sink families into the sink base cabinets, and you have a number of options here. Three different sink types, or kitchen sink types, then we have a round and a square vanity sink. And then, of course, you always have the option of turning the sinks off and picking your own sink. Uh, another thing we did was we decided to include some of the parts we use in the family so that you can use them in the project. If you're making um, an in-place piece of millwork that you just couldn't accomplish with our other families, this will at least save you time. So now we have a blank panel we have a door and we have drawers. So this drawer, uh, you can stretch to fit whatever size you want, and then you can pick how many drawers you want in that space. So it doesn't have to be one, you can pick five if you want, and it will regenerate to have five drawers. So that will save you a ton of time. We've also put a corbel in uh, each style with the exception of the modern style, which typically doesn't have corbels. And because those were something that we were finding is hard to find. We've included a new floating shelf family, and then some closet families. So we've got a hanger rod, a shelf, and divider. And I'll show you how I've been using those in a minute. Then to the base families, we've added these drawer or um, desk fronts. So you can get a plain panel, a decorative panel, and a drawer. These are great for over knee spaces. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. We've put in, we've now included an island column that's decorative, that matches the style. And then we have this new divider, this base divider. Uh, that's thick and is also decorated to go. I use it on either side of the stove, but I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Then on the tall cabinets, we've added two new cabinets. I told you about the oven cabinet that now has doors underneath. And the other one we've made is called a uh, tall hidden pantry door. So uh, it's popular lately to hide your pantry door by putting what looks like a tall cabinet and then the whole face opens and swings in or out and allows a person to walk into the pantry, but from the outside looks completely hidden. So that's now an option for you. And then on the upper cabinets, our biggest overhaul were, were to make new hood cabinets. So you can see the hoods are much more decorative than they used to be. And then you still have a scaled down option for hoods. And then you have the window uh, cabinets to span across the windows. So those are what's changed. Those are the new families and the upgraded families. Another thing we changed has to do with plans and elevations. We got a lot of requests for the ability to see the base cabinets below the countertop. So now if you click on a base cabinet, you now have the option to show the cabinet outline. So if you want to see those, that is up to you now. We also had some people request the ability to change the visibility of the hardware. So now as you can see, I've shut off the hardware here and you can turn it back on. Along with the swing symbols are another thing people ask to get rid of. Apparently some people do not like the swing symbols in elevation. So again, you just click and unchecks show door swing symbol, and that goes away. The other item I got a lot of requests were the naming convention. So now by default, 
you have the standard format naming convention for a cabinet. If I click on this upper cabinet, you can see that it's 153612, which is its wet width, height, and depth. Then I've also included a tag, an intelligent tag, so that you can easily tag your millwork. And again, it follows the same convention, 15, 12, 12. And then your, your company probably has its own system of how you designate what kind of cabinet it is. By default, this is what we've got going on here. Uh, uh, there's a key inside the download of what's been done. And if you don't like it, you can change it. And I'll show you our last change that's also a large change is these families now have type catalogs. So if I hit the load family command and I go to pick a cabinet, it's now like structural steel families where it loads in all the options. So this should uh, really save you room in your files because you do not need to load all the family types like you used to have to do. Now you can pick which ones you do and don't want in your file. The other thing this does is the cat type catalog is a TXT file with the same name as the family and you always put them in the same spot in your library. Now, if you want to make mass changes, you can simply change the TXT file to a CSV file. And this now opens up in Excel and you can easily make changes to the family types or the naming convention uh, all in Excel and then you save it back as a TXT file. So um, in order to do that, I will make another tutorial. So if you're interested in that, I'll do a step by step in another video. But this is a summary of all our new changes. You can get these families at revitfamily.biz. Thanks for watching, guys.